Right, House Democrats celebrating tonight as a second federal judge gives them a win on their efforts to dig into not only the president's finances, but also those of his children, grandchildren, and in-laws as well. Let's talk about it with our legal eagles tonight. Former Deputy Assistant Attorneys General Harry Littman and Tom Dupree. Thank you guys both for joining us tonight. Thank you, Shannon. Thanks, Shannon. Okay, so let's talk about this ruling. Um, Robert Barnes, an attorney who's been on with us as well, says this in a tweet. Another Obama appointee rubber stamps one of the most invasive congressional subpoenas in American history. Privacy from spying politicians' eyes is dead if this remains the law. He quotes then Watkins v. U.S. There's no general authority to expose the private affairs of individuals. Harry, does this go all the way to the Supreme Court? And should people, regardless of either side of the aisle that they're on, be worried about uh, the potential release of any president's personal finances? Not this one, Shannon. This, the, 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 uh, there are other issues that may, but this is just a standard subpoena of the sort that uh, Congress and, and prosecutors would do any and every day for any investigation. The argument on the other side, and it's the same one, by the way, significantly, that Secretary Mnuchin is saying in taxes, there is no valid legislative purpose. And what both judges have said now is the same thing they said in favor of Trump on the uh, immigration order. We don't second guess here. Of course, there could be a valid legislative purpose. There are possible financial conflicts of interest. It's, this is a very straightforward, daily pedestrian kind of uh, subpoena, and I don't expect it, there, it to be overturned on appeal. Okay, uh, Tom, uh, both of you have served within the DOJ. I, I want to read something from Democratic Congressman Ted Lieu, obviously not a fan of the president. He says this in a tweet. Dear at the Justice Department Bill Barr, this Judge Ramos ruling is the second court loss you had this week. Shows your legal arguments suck. You want the imperial presidency, but your actions will result in a weakening of the office of the president. Cut your losses and stop the cover-ups. Tom, your response. <laughs> Shannon, I have too many thoughts to fit in a 20-second answer, but I guess my first response is, look, I mean, the fact that you lose two court cases doesn't say a whole lot to me. I mean, there is a lot of litigation going on in a lot of different countries, a lot of, or, uh, a lot of different courtrooms, a lot of different forums, a lot of different issues. So the fact that they've lost two isn't a big deal, particularly since we know both of these decisions will ultimately get appealed to the Court of Appeals. I think that the administration has set a legal strategy of doing everything they can to fight these congressional congressional efforts or efforts by investigators to get at the president's documents, to dig into his finances. I suspect they will meet with success in some other courts, so the fact that they've had two losses out of the gate doesn't say a whole lot to me. Okay. Uh, Charlie Kirk, conservative commentator, uh, often seen on our air as well, tweets this. The irony of Nancy Pelosi accusing Donald Trump of, quote, the biggest cover-up in U.S. history, all while President Trump is working to expose the what really is the biggest cover up in history is truly incredible. Democrats know they're in trouble. OK, the meeting blew up this morning after she accused him of covering up crimes. Harry, um, are Democrats feeling the heat or not? I don't know. I mean, it seems to me she was sort of goading him and it worked. I see the irony going both ways here, Shannon. This is the president who has accused the FBI leadership within the last week of treason, a capital uh, offense. So, you know, he, he, I think, has a much thinner skin than, than when he's, uh, uh, you know, actually dishing it out. But what she's saying is he won't let anyone testify. That, that's his legal right to try to do, but it's un, it hasn't happened in other scandals. So, you know, I, I, I think now it's a sort of political war of words. Yeah, I mean, Tom, we know the legal and the political both continue, and they're two very different fronts. Some of it is, you know, in a courtroom. Some of it is the optics and the PR battle that happens. Um, but the president would say he has let people testify for a lot of hours and a lot of people and a lot of documents. Um, but Democrats say not enough. Yeah, and I think the president has a fair point. Uh, I mean, we all know the resources that went into the Mueller investigation. We know that the president allowed his uh, uh, officials, including Don McGahn, to meet with Mueller for extended periods of time. And so I think from the president's perspective, it's like, what more is there? Why are the Democrats so insistent on plowing the same ground, thinking that they, the members of the House Judiciary Committee and their staffers, could uncover evidence that Bob Mueller failed to? It seems very unlikely. We all know Mueller had a real dream team, very experienced investigators. If they didn't find it, I'm not quite sure why the members of the House Judiciary Committee think that they'll track it down. Well, as those investigations continue, we know of at least three investigations into the investigators that we're waiting on as well. Much to chew on. So please come back, gentlemen. Harry and Tom, great Thank to have you, you both. Shannon. Thank you. Thank you, Tom.